What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about what I personally traded today on the 19th of June in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in and that I want to trade here over the next couple of days in June of 2019. But before we do get into all of these different topics for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content that I'm putting up here on YouTube you find it helpful feel free to go down below and hit that like button that is how you can repay me it helps me out honestly guys and it really supports the channel and me in general and I do really appreciate every single one of you guys out there hitting that like button subscribing to the channel keeping up with the content it really does mean a lot to me so without further ado let's just get right right into it guys. The S&P 500 today was up $8.71 at the close, up 0.3%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 0.15%, up $38.46 at the close. And the NASDAQ here, guys, up $28.50, up 0.37% today at the close. And today, guys, we were actually a awaiting a decision from the Federal Reserve on whether or not they were going to cut the interest rates, raise the interest rates, which no one virtually Actually, nobody was expecting them to do that, and they ended up not cutting or raising the interest rates there, keeping them flat. And this is kind of what I expected, to be completely honest with you guys, because through my research, through me just looking through a bunch of different sources over the past couple of weeks, many people, I'd say most of the people were expecting the Fed to cut the rates in next month's meeting, as opposed to this month, which is the June month. So again, I wasn't too surprised. Fed did not cut the rates and the markets over the past couple of trading days, they've really been pricing in a Fed rate cut in my opinion. And you guys can see here as we break down some technicals how well the market has been doing since this bottoming out point you know on the S&P at about 2745. You know the NASDAQ got down and the Dow got down and we'll take a look at those in a couple of minutes here. But ever since the S&P got down to about 2735 35. You know, we've gotten so close to these all time highs, breaking resistance after resistance after resistance, guys. Take a look. We broke 2800. We broke 2860. We broke 2890. We broke today, or this might have been yesterday. No, no uh, it was kind of today and yesterday. We broke the 2915 level. And now, honestly, guys, the next resistance that I'm looking at for the SP 500, if I get my handy dandy tool out, here is going to be the all-time high at about 29.54, which at this point is under 30 points away. So let's say the markets explode. They have a ridiculous day, maybe a couple of days in a row that are very good. You know, this S&P 500 index could break the all-time highs. And you guys can see, again, like I said, you know, if we go back to that other tool very quickly, you know, we broke 29.15. It seems like we're holding that level as a new support port right now, which is very good, solidifying to me that we're trading in this new channel between 29.15 and the all-time high at around 29.50. So S&P right now, it's about, I'd say, under 1% away from that all-time high. And if we're going over here to the 20-day, one-hour guys, you guys can see you know, the Fed decision caused the market, or rather the the, um, the the market waiting for the Fed decision, you know, caused the market to be very, very uh, stagnant and flat for these couple of days, as you guys can see. You know, we got the double top at 29.10, we sold off, we kind of uh, settled for three, four days of trading, and then yesterday we got that big gap up, and now it seems like we're at a new uh, level of support, a new level on the S&P. 
keys. So the uptrend is still intact, guys. But instead of dumping here, you know, we popped up, we bounced on the 50 SMA as a support. Everything is looking good right now for the S&P for more upside. There is absolutely no technicals right now that are pointing to a dump, but there are some technicals pointing pointing to, you know, the S&P in general being kind of overbought right now. And you guys can probably guess that is the RSI. That is the indicator that we use to see whether or not a stock, an ETF, an index, a future is overbought or oversold. And it's it kind of makes sense, right? The markets have gone up. Let's see how much in terms of percent from the S&P from this bottom a couple of trading weeks ago. About up 6%, guys. 6% move here from this bottoming out point. At that point, the RSI was very oversold. And since we've ran up so much, it makes sense that now the RSI is overbought. So that is what the rundown is looking like right now on the S&P. We are almost at those all-time highs again. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, we've been breaking resistance after resistance after resistance over these past couple of trading weeks on the Dow as well. We got to as as low as $24,750. We broke $25,500 level of resistance. We broke $26,200. And today, we actually broke, or this might have been yesterday, we broke the $26,000. Five, uh, 26,500 level of resistance and it seems like we're maintaining that level as a new support right now as you guys can see from today's price action and from yesterday's price action if we go a bit closer you guys can see we gapped up we consolidated right on top of that level that new support level and today we kind of retested it bounced again making uh kind of solidifying to me that that is still a strong support level right now for the Dow Jones also notice how the Dow on the five day, five minute, it's been riding the 180 SMA support. It held that, bounced on top of it today as well. Looking very good for the continuation of the uptrend right now. So, the all time high on the Dow, if we go to the one year, one day, is actually approaching us right now. We're about 400, about uh, kind of 400 to 500 points away from that all time high at about $26,951. The next resistance I'm seeing at this point is going to be right at that all-time high, right? Once we broke out of this level at about 26,500, the next resistance, we've talked about this in many, many videos, is that all-time high level, and that is where we currently are right now on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And just like the S&P, you know, we were awaiting the decision from the Fed, which kind of, you know, kept the markets flat, and that affected the Dow as well. You guys can see, you know, we hit that double top point at about 26,200. We sold off to about 26,000 kind of maintain that level for a couple of days, but we still maintain the 50 SMA support on the 20-day, one-hour chart, which was a very good sign for the continuation of the uptrend. If we were to break that, that would be a very bearish move, in my opinion, from a technical perspective here. And you guys can see we gapped up very heavily. Um, really, uh, uh, what's the word there? Confirming the bounce on that 50 SMA uh, support. We broke that level of resistance first at 26,200 and then we broke another at 26500 like I said and the uptrend guys if I just show you it's 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 still intact it's still intact right now what I would need to see in my opinion what we would need to see for a reversal to the downside at this point you know would be a break under this 50 simple moving average on the Dow Jones industrial average and notice how just like the S&P the Dow is very overbought as well which is kind of alarming to me especially now that we got the the news that the Fed is not going to cut rates, you know, is the market going to dump now? Is the market going to take this negatively? This is something that I would love to know. And I'm excited to see over these next couple of days, you know, what's the market? How is the market going to react to this? So, oh my goodness, guys, please tell me that I am on the internet right now. It says delayed data here, reconnecting. And for those of you guys that don't know, I am in Mexico right now, and the Wi-Fi has been kind of spotty around here, so this is not doing very well for me right now because the internet and what I need to film the video, which is Think or Swim, is kind of lagging on me right now, guys. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Let's see if I can reconnect this. Alrighty, guys, we are back. Here is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ 
just like the S&P and the Dow, it is reaching those all-time high levels. As we bottomed out at $7,000, we've rallied so heavily over the past couple of weeks. It's been crazy. Tech has rebounded so heavily here. So we can see we've been breaking resistance after resistance on the NASDAQ, just like the Dow and just like the S&P. At this point, guys, you know, the next resistance is that all-time high at about $7,900 on the NASDAQ. You guys can see we broke $7,500, which I've been talking about in many, many videos in the past as that level being the strong, a strong resistance on the NASDAQ from back in uh, kind of towards the end of March in 2019, back Back towards the middle of May, you guys can see those are two points in time where the NASDAQ got rejected there once, twice, and actually more towards about a week ago in the beginning towards the middle of June in 2019, we got rejected there as well, and we were struggling to get out of that level. So since we broke out of that, and we also broke out of the downwards channel that we talked about a couple of videos ago, and oh my goodness, is this not loading? Why is it not loading, guys? Anyway. Anyway, you guys can see what I'm talking about, right? The markets right now, they're inching to those all-time highs. And here we go. This is the channel that I was talking to you guys about. The downwards channel, we talked about how if it broke the support of it, that would be a pretty big bearish move on a technical, uh, spe technically speaking here. And if we were to pop out, which we ended up doing, and you guys can see how the action has been since then, that would be a very bullish move. And we popped out. We broke 7,500, 50-ish, that resistance. And from there, it's been nothing but up for the NASDAQ. We've been riding that 50 SMA. We pulled back and we retested it today. And it looks like we're going to break that 7720 level of resistance maybe tomorrow if this continues to run. And again, everything is pointing to an uptrend right now for the NASDAQ, just like it is for the S&P and the Dow. But be careful, guys. NASDAQ, just like the other two markets, just like the other two indexes, it's very overbought. The RSI is at 71. So this decision that the Fed, they're not cutting rates right now. This can have an impact on the market to the downside, in my opinion. There's a possibility a possibility that it can because the market was heavily pricing in a rate cut once we got that slim chance of news you guys remember that is what caused this market to run up it was about two weeks ago we got that news that the fed might cut the rates that caused the market to fly, guys. And now that we aren't getting that rate cut this month, who knows? The market could potentially cool off here. So that is the market update uh, video for today, the market update portion of today's video. And now let's get into the trading update video. And honestly, guys... I didn't do any trading today because you guys can see my computer has been very, very spotty. The Wi-Fi around this place, I'm going to be honest, I have never been to a resort as big as the resort that I'm currently at right now. And for those of you guys that don't know, I mentioned it a couple of videos, the previous two videos. I'm in Mexico right now. I'm staying at the Grand Riviera Princess, and this hotel, this resort is massive. So that could be why in some parts parts of the resort, you know, the Wi-Fi is spotty. That's kind of the conclusion that I've come to. And I've been on and off of the Wi-Fi and I didn't really want to get caught in a position where, you know, the Wi-Fi cuts off and then I can't sell. That's like the worst possible scenario, right? So today I personally didn't trade, but that's not going to be how it is for this whole trip. I'm going to find a spot in this hotel where I can go for an hour or two hours in the morning, look at some charts, trade, and actually have have a stable Wi-Fi connection because again, I'm scared that I'm going to get caught in a trade then end up losing money because I wasn't able to sell. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. If you've been in places, in locations, especially on vacation where a lot of things are going on, you're going to the beach, you're doing this, you're doing that, and the Wi-Fi is, spot, is, is spotty as well. So let me know down below, honestly, guys, if you've had experience with this, and I am going to actually make a 
video here in the next week about my personal experience trading on vacation kind of tips and tricks once I start getting in the groove of things here because we are going to be here my girlfriend and I we're going to be here for about 10 days so I'll get into the groove of things in a couple of days here and I will let you guys know how that goes so for today again no trading for me but I was still in and out of think or swim throughout the day you know checking up some charts we saw JNUG today did very well JNUG was up 39 cents 4.18 percent it pretty much bounced on that 50 SMA it popped up continuing its uptrend it's looking very solid right now but one thing that I'm kind of nervous about is gold. I don't know if gold's overextended, but JNUG for sure at this point is overextended. And yeah, gold is getting to the point where it is a bit overbought. So now I would like to see an, a potential play on the pullback on gold and the pullback on JNUG in order to play um, JDST, which is a bear ETF that goes up whenever gold is selling off. So you guys can see gold is very overbought right now. Not very overbought bought, but it's approaching overbought. You know, JNUG is overbought. So if these two cool off a bit, if they pull back, you know, JDST is going to be a very nice bounce back play here, maybe back up to that 50 simple moving average, which has been a resistance over the past couple of weeks. And if we do end up trading back up to it, you know, we may be able to grab a four, five, six, maybe a 7%, probably more like a four or 5% move. You know, if we do end up getting back up there, actually more more like a potential, I'd say, 7-8% to the highest and a 3-4% move to the low end on um, JDST. We saw natural gas today, guys. It dumped pretty hard. Not extremely hard, but it went down about five cents, about two percent here. And D gas guys has been on an absolute tear these past couple of months. If you were to buy in at forty six dollars back in November, which is something that is not recommended with these leveraged ETFs, you're not really supposed to hold these more than a week. Their objective as an investment is to be day is to be day traded in and out due to the volatility that they offer. But this one, if you were to buy at 46, you would have pretty much 4X your money, a little bit under 4X at this point, right? And we saw today with that sell-off in natural gas, D-Gas bounced perfectly on that 50 SMA, went up $9. I believe it was up like $10, $11 at its highest today. It ended up closing at 5.28% at the upside. So this one... I'm watching this one very closely here, guys, for a potential pullback and a retest on that 50 SMA to potentially get back into degas, you know, as natural gas continues to drop. Because at this point, you know, natural gas is not showing any signs that it's going to come back to life. Um, it's not really showing any signs that it wants to pop back up here to the upside. If you guys can see here, you know, on the five day, five minute, it's been nothing but dropping over the past five days. Days, 20 day, one hour. It's been nothing but dropping. So until we get out of this 180 SMA, this 50 SMA of resistance that we do see here on the 20 day, one hour chart, on the five day, five minute chart, you know, I'm not looking to trade um, UGAS, which is the ETF that goes up whenever natural gas is going up. But let me say one thing here, guys. You know, when UGAS does end up reversing, when natural gas does get into that season where it's going up in price, there's going to be so much much potential in you guys it's going to be crazy right once we get you know out of maybe back into like 250 260 270 and maybe get back upwards to three dollars just think about the move that you guys is going to make so at this point I'm not looking to chase DGAS because it is very, very high up in terms of its price. I'm kind of being patient and kind of waiting for a strong reversal on UGAS. And from there, you know, there can be a ton of money to be made. So natural gas and gold, those are very interesting right now. We saw crude oil made a pretty good move out of that 50 SMA today. This can be a very bullish move. And it kind of is a bullish move because we got a triple bottom at about 51.50. 
50 to about $52, broke that 50 SMA, and now we could be trading up to that 180 SMA after this consolidation and kind of a pop that we are seeing here. So if it does complete the pop, if crude oil does start to get back into 55, you know, UWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up, this one's going to be a very good... Um, ETF to play in my opinion, right? Take a look. We broke out of the 50 SMA. We're seeing an EMA cross above the 50 SMA, which is a pretty bullish move there in terms of um, the moving average indicators. We're holding the 50, uh, 50 SMA as a support. Now, all we need to see is that pop, is that breakout on crude oil, and then UWT will follow, opening up that move. So in terms of ETFs, that is what I'm personally watching here. I'm really liking JDST for potential um, bounce back play, UWT, and I'm being patient with UGAS gas and degas looking to see if natural gas continues the downtrend you know degas is going to be the move but once we do get that reversal to the upside it's coming the question is when you know you gas is going to be a very solid play so we saw markets right now they're very overbought, right? We got the news. The Fed is not cutting rates right now. So I'm waiting to see how the market's going to react to this. Are we going to pull back? Are we going to see the market cool off? If the market cools off, you know, SQQQ, T, uh, not TQQQ, but SPXS, these two ETFs that I always talk about on the channel that go up when the markets are selling off, these two are going to be very, very good, right? SPXS, this one goes up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off. SQQQ is going up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. And the NASDAQ, since it's gone up the most out of the three major indexes, that has opened up the most margin of profit on SQQQ. Just take a look at this, guys. SQQQ up to the previous resistance has about 25% profit uh, that it's offering, right? SPXS up to the resistance has a bit less at about 18%. And that's again because the NASDAQ has gone up more than the S&P 500, bringing down SQQQ more than the SPXS, if that makes any sense to you guys. So let's take a look at some tech stocks here. You know, Facebook, we talked about Facebook, how it's been doing very well. It broke out of that 50 and that 180 simple moving average. Seems like we got rejected now at about $193, $195. We pulled back, and now we're holding that 180 SMA as a support now. This is going to be interesting, guys. The RSI cooled off a bit. The stock cooled off a bit. Are we going to maybe pop, on, uh, pop above the 180 SMA here as a support? And if we do, that could be a nice play of about 4 or 5% on Facebook if we do get back to that resistance level back up here. You guys saw Amazon. You know, Amazon's been doing very well. We're at a resistance right now at about 19, 10, 19, 15. If we break that, this can be a play up to about 19, 60. Apple, Apple's also at a resistance right now at about $199, about $200. I, I'd say, honestly, if we get back to $200, we can be running back up to $210 potentially. Again, I don't know how things are going to play out now, guys, because the Fed, they didn't cut their rates. So this could weigh heavily on the markets to the downside at this point. I'm not too sure. Or we can be stagnant in the markets for the next month, and then if the Fed cuts the rates in a month from now, that could send the markets up flying to all-time highs. These stocks can go up to all-time highs again. I'm not sure what's happening, but one thing I am sure of is just studying the technicals, right? Keeping an eye on the technicals every day, keeping an eye on the fundamentals, what's going on out there in the market, what's going on out there with these companies. That's going to help me decide, okay, maybe it's a good time to hop in or maybe it's not a good time to hop in, right? So if we break 200, we may be getting back up to 205, maybe 203, you know, maybe 207, maybe 210 on Apple. And that is what I am personally watching here. You know, Tesla, this is another one that's, that, that has made a ridiculous move here. 
We're breaking out of that 180 SMA finally, right, guys? We are finally breaking out of there. But one thing that alarms me is that the the the, the negative narrative around Tesla is still out there. And until we get, you know, a crazy earnings report, a profit from Tesla for a quarter, maybe some crazy production numbers, I don't really think Tesla is fully going to recover, you know, back up to the, to, to the high 200s, mid 200s, $300 even, you know, I don't really think that's going to happen at this point negative um spotlight is still on tesla but this is a good step in the right direction that we are breaking out of the 180 sma resistance that we are seeing a potential setup of a bullish cross here of the 50 crossing above the 180 in terms of the simple moving averages but again i'm being cautious with tesla but i'm still watching it here so that's kind of a rundown on a couple of different stocks and etfs me personally guys Guys, I'm not looking to hop into some of these larger cap tech stocks, to be completely honest. A bunch of them are a bit overbought right now, but I am still keeping an eye on them. I still think it's worth watching them just in case the market does continue this rally. Because just because the Fed isn't cutting their rates doesn't mean the market's going to drop, guys. It could end up, who knows, the market could continue to run up. Who really knows at this point, right? But one thing that I'm definitely watching are the ETFs that I that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, as well as SPXS, you know, SPXL, you know, SQQQ, all of these ETFs that you guys see here on my watch list. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you did, go down below, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. If you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to the channel and Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Drop a comment. Let me know what have you guys done to help yourselves trade on vacation. I've been on a couple of different vacations, but I haven't been at a spot where the Wi-Fi is as spotty as it is here. And you guys literally saw it in the video. My thinkorswim stopped working. So let me know. Anything, guys, in the comments, thoughts mark on, on the market, thoughts on trading, whatever it may be, I would love talking to you guys down there. I'll catch you all in the next video, whenever that may be. It'll probably be tomorrow or um, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday, guys. So Thursday, Friday, expect a video. I'll catch you all then. Peace out.